Welcome to Drum LCK. My name is John, and today we have a special guest. My good friend Tucker Marshall stopped by, and uh, he's going to teach us a little bit about Ted Reed's syncopation. Let's go. All right, Tucker. So uh, before we jump in, now that everyone's heard you play a little bit, why don't you tell us a little bit about you and um, when you started playing through syncopation? Well, uh, I started playing drums when I was five, just like a lot of other kids. Um, but when I got to high school, I got much more interested in being serious about the drums yeah. and decided that I was going to go into college and a career out of this instrument. Um, and I decided that I was going to go into college, which meant probably a jazz track, which we've actually talked about before in a former video. Go check that out. For sure. Um, <laughs> nice plug. But uh, <laughs> once I got to college, my professor uh, told me about this book called Syncopation by Ted Reed. Um, it was uh, first published back in 1958 and has been around ever since, and every drummer ever has used it in some way, shape, or form. But there is one page that everyone seems to play, and that's uh, that's what we're going to work on today. Awesome. What page is that? That's page 38, um, again, in the book called Syncopation. Yeah, and, and for those of you who aren't familiar with it, um, there really are two books that are super famous and everybody does. It's stick control and syncopation. Um, and one of the cool things about syncopation is you have what's written, but there are so many different ways to practice what's actually written. And I think uh, I'm most excited for you to kind of talk through some different ways of working through this. Yeah, I think for me, it's always been about how can I make this group of eight measures stretch further and yeah. get the most out of it. And that's what I want to show you today. This isn't something that's sort of reinventing the wheel. A lot of people do this. This is just my variation and take on, uh, on how I look at this uh, exercise and how I practice it. All right. So um, we're going to jump right into the first exercise here. You, do, would you like to kind of explain it first? Yeah, definitely. So um, again, we're page 38, uh, exercise one. Um, and this is a full page um, of rhythm. So it's not just uh, these eight measures. Everything that we do in this uh, lesson today apply to the whole page. I'm just giving you a, a sneak peek of what it sounds like over this sort of rhythm and how it's written. It might look a little strange when you first get the book um, because it, the way it's barred uh, with the rhythm is not necessarily normal. It looks very strange to people who are just first opening this. Yep. <laughs> but once you get the hang of it, it really does start to make a lot of sense. Um, you can read it as a straight eighth note sort of feel, uh, very like one and two and three and four. And uh, But when I was in college, what I was explaining before we took this and we said, okay, let's make it into a triplet feel and put eighth note triplets behind this rhythm. Awesome. Um, more of a one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet sort of idea. Um, and that's what we did with this rhythm and sort of found different ways to use this in a comping exercise 
and also in triplet soloing exercises, which we'll get to in a bit. But for this first exercise, this is just going to be played straight as is how it's written in the book. Here we go. Let's jump into exercise two here. Yeah, so exercise two, very similar idea to what we just did, but this time we're going to break the rhythm up between the snare drum and the bass drum, the two most common things used in a comping fashion on the drum set in a jazz context. Um, so every eighth note is gonna be played on the snare drum and every quarter note is gonna be played on the bass drum. 105 beats per minute, check it out. All right, that was exercise number two. Let's take a look at what we're doing in number three. This time, instead of just playing one voice for our comping exercise, we're gonna play two voices for our comping exercise. So we're gonna play the ride cymbal and the bass drum together on the rhythm that's written on the page. And every triplet in between is gonna be played as a ghost note on the snare drum. Let's go. All right, honestly, I was watching you warm up earlier today and this next exercise exercises 4a and 4b were my favorite and i was pretty impressed with what you were doing here so why don't you kind of uh talk us through it yeah so as i was explaining it closer to the beginning of the video when we were talking about uh how i read this page and how a lot of people work on this exercise what we're going to do is basically make this a soloing exercise so you might say well in the first three those are much more like in the middle of playing with a group sort right. of context, right? And the cool thing about this is now we're gonna take it and we're gonna have some fun with it, right? So we're gonna make it into a solo and there's two different ways that we can do that. So on the first one, uh, it's gonna be just all triplets on the uh, two toms and the snare drum. So let's take a look at it. That was really cool how the accents are, are playing the music, right? The, that's comping, right? Yeah, well, so comping is basically short for complimenting. Um, and we are complimenting what the soloist is doing in any given context. So uh, if just like we're having a conversation right now and you're listening to what words I'm going to say, and then you will say words back to me as a conversation, right. we do that in a musical context where I play you know, something on the drums and the saxophone player, for example, might, uh, you know, s play some sort of riff back to me. And that's our conversation, just like we're having with words right now. So right. then when I break it up and make it a solo, just like any, you know, saxophone player, again, for example, might say, okay, um, I want to play something melodic. I want to play something that seems like it's very musical. I can do that on the drums too, because I have two pitches here. Uh, so yeah. why not use those and create my own melody with the rhythm that's written here on the page? Right, and keyword melody, right? Um, yeah. Sometimes drummers forget that they still need to be musical. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's important to, to say um, that you are also still a musician. 
You know, drummers get a bad rap for being drummers and not being musicians. And I think working on something like this can really uh, up your uh, melodic ideas and give you some, you know, fodder. I always say, John, uh, you know, it's important to um, sort of take little snippets of this. You're not going to play this whole page in a song. Right. Uh, yeah. But the cool thing is you're going to create some really cool licks. You know, maybe it's two measures out of this. Maybe it's one measure out of this. And you put it in your toolbox. Yeah. You know, that's what I tell all of my students is you're basically creating little snippets, little riffs, if you will, if you're a guitar player and you think about riffs. We're doing the same thing with the drums here uh, where we're taking that one measure idea, that two measure idea, maybe even four measures, and we're putting it in our toolbox to do... Um, in any context that we can just pull it out at any time. So in 4B, we are going to take the same idea of what we just did in 4A and just diddle all of the snare drum notes. Again, at 105 beats per minute. I think you guys can all see why those two examples were my favorite while you were warming up. But anyway, moving on to our fifth and final exercise, uh, let's jump in and, and have you explain it a little bit. Yeah, so this might be uh, sort of the most difficult. I kind of broke them up from the easiest uh, to progressingly more difficult. And the cool thing about exercise five and really all of these is you can make them as difficult um, or as fun um, or as easy as you need to make them for your skill level. That's what I love about syncopation mm -hmm. is that you can really do whatever you want with it um, and make it an exercise that works for you. These are just five that I chose off the top of my head that I've worked on for the past, you know, eight years or so. Yeah, um, and it's great because really you could give syncopation to a beginner yeah. and the most advanced player, and you're still going to get something. Absolutely, out of it. absolutely. So number five, you can really make this as difficult as you want to, um, but what you want to listen for in this upcoming example is a fixed pattern that I've created. I've basically given myself a rule and said, okay, uh, I'm going to play this melodic idea in this format. So... When you listen to this next example, listen for that melody to happen over top of the rhythm that we've been playing this whole time. Let's check it out. So what you're really doing is playing the drums in that order with the accents in the song. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, that's awesome. Super musical. So um, first of all, you know, wrapping everything up, I want to thank Tucker for taking the leap of faith and, and, and throwing himself out here on the channel. This is not easy to do. It's hard to teach a camera. <laughs> <laughs> Even the best teachers have a hard time teaching a camera. So thank you so much for doing it. And all of you, Thank you so much for watching. This is a longer video. And if you're still watching at this point, you are my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the other thing I want to add is Tucker's going to start being more involved with the channel. Um, he has a lot to help teach. And um, honestly, his strength is my weakness in jazz. So I think we'll be able to work really well together. And the opposite. You can teach me some rock stuff. There you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, I know most of you that watch this channel are rockers. But trust me, it is so important to learn this stuff too. All right, I think that's all I have. You got anything, Tucker? I think that's it. All right, thank you all so much for watching. Till next time, take care. See you.